Yes, yes, sir. Um, is Joseph Breckenridge employed by the United States Postal Service as a spokesperson, press liaison, or communication specialist? for the purpose of reducing confusion, eliminating conflicting answers, and providing the media with answers that are honest and true. Joseph Breckenridge is our communications person, yes. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Question is, um, we we lease, we own some buildings, we lease some buildings. If the building is leased, what happens is part of the process. Uh, each uh, each facility has a clause in the lease. Sometimes we could notify the owner of the property and end the contract within two to three months. Sometimes we can break the contract um, with a penalty, and then other times we might have to extend the maintain the lease. That's part of the, the, the process that if, let's say if the lease was just signed this year, and most of the time the leases are done two years in advance, a year to two years in advance. So if the, the, the lease is new and we felt that, well, we're gonna be in there and we're tied into a contract, that might be a reason that it won't be part of consideration. And the postal loan facilities we're looking to sell Impossible. I hope I have answered that. Okay. In a letter dated February 18, 2011, from Senator Richard Shelby, he stated that the USPS had no intention of closing the Rowland Post Office. In fact, he stated that only three offices in the entire state would be closed. These offices were Alberta City, Capitol Heights, and Boston Finance, uh, Finance Station. The first two were to be closed on February 26th, and the other was to be closed March 26th of this year. At what point in time did the information that the USPS provided to Senator for Shelby become incorrect? Uh, what date was that, Len? February 18th, 2011. Yeah, this, this year. February of this year? February 2011. Yeah. February 18th. Uh, those three locations are finance units. They were closed. Uh, this is a post office, it is proposed. So at this point, um, it's not closed. Okay. You know, it's just a proposal. Mm -hmm. And I know those are kind of a twist of words, but that's the way it is. A station or branch facility, we can close tomorrow. A post office, uh, we have to propose a closing. And it goes through a procedure that we're dealing with today. So like Boylston, Tuscaloosa, Eastside, those facilities, we set a date, it was approved, we closed it. No town hall meeting, nothing. Post offices are different. And, and Tuscaloosa, Eastside is a large facility. Why did they know about Ryan? They only said three, but closed the other two. I don't, I don't know why Senator Shelby says he didn't know about it. We met with Shelby. The question was, why didn't Shelby know about Ryland? And I, I can't answer for Shelby and or his representatives. However, we meet with the, uh, the representatives, all the senators, uh, at least once or twice a year. We have congressional meetings. And we go over our uh, proposed closings and we, we discuss it with them. So, I don't know. But that may be... And his response may be a, a, a twist on the words of closing versus a proposed closing. So I can't I can't answer that. Yeah, it's like a question. Just, just a Master Lake, it has a manager of customer service. There's a postmaster of Huntsville, which covers all of the offices in the city of Huntsville. 
but each one of the stations and branches have a manager of customer service. So it's different than a postmaster. So most of the time, com the common title for someone in a, uh, an installation, most people say, I want to talk to the postmaster. <laughs> Master laid, uh, wind drive, they all have managers of customer service. But there's a postmaster of Huntsville. The question is, are we, are we thinking of consolidating small post offices? Right. We are looking at all facilities. So, for example, and I just gave an example of uh, Tuscaloosa Eastside. Uh, we just did River Run, um, River Run Annex, which is a branch office in Birmingham. We've got uh, Centerpoint, which is a large facility that's on a table for proposal consolidation and closing. So it's various sizes. But the difference, the difference is, is this. The smaller offices have more feasibility because they're small. See, if an office has 10, 15 routes in it, it's not likely that there's another facility nearby that can absorb all of the equipment, all of the people. So a smaller office, I can take the boxes out and move them into another location, that's pretty much it for us to move the operation and move the mail sort. So, but it's not just small offices. And I, that question comes up a lot. Are we just targeting small offices? And that's, it's, it's across the board. Uh, we'll take care of it. Okay. We'll go, we'll go like this. Whether it was intentional deception or an honest mistake, the customers have been provided incorrect information by the United States Postal Service on several occasions. The post office via Kate Salina gave incorrect information to Senator Shelby, who in turn gave this incorrect information to his constituents in Rhino. The post office via Joseph Breckenridge gave incorrect information to the Huntsville Times, who in turn printed incorrect information and it was read by customers of the Rowland Post Office. The post office via Derek King gave incorrect information to the Rowland Post Office customers in the form of untrue information on survey cards. Once again, the post office, via Derek King, caused incorrect information to be reported on the 10 o'clock news. This incorrect information went out over the air on the evening of April 7, 2011, and was viewed by customers of the Rowland Post Office. As postal managers, do you believe that the potential closing of the Rowland Post Office has been handled in a professional manner? Yes. Yes, I do. Because we follow the process. The question was, my answer was to, to, this question was yes, and to her question, she said, why do I feel that we've handled it professionally? I, and my answer is, we, we follow the process. I do know that there were some bumps in the road. I know there was some verbiage on the survey cards that was um, not clear, and we had to send out a correction to the surveys. Uh, but overall, we, we follow the process. I mean, that's what the Op Support Group is here for. They make sure that we follow this process because once we submit it, if we miss a step in this process, we won't go through. So they keep us in line. <coughs> yes, sir. If you consolidate our post office with another post office somewhere, or multiple post offices, yes, sir. Is? Will we get refunded for our post office boxes? So that was one of them. Right. The question is, if, if the proposal goes through and the post office is closed, would the current box holders be provided a refund should they not want to go to the new facility? And the answer is yes. It will be prorated. You know, whatever you have remaining on the con Yeah. Yes. Yes, sir. So, sort of a follow-up question to your process, and from this point forward, assuming the pessimistic approach of, of driving to make the closing, okay. what is the time frame that decision occurs, the closure occurs, the transfer occurs? Okay. The question is, uh, what's the time frame should the actual proposal go through? And we, because we haven't done any that's open, uh, we estimate six to eight months. 
to, to make the decision or to actually close and move? Uh, to make the decision, no, for the, for the, no, to close, the actual okay. move out, <coughs> post, move the boxes, six to eight months. Could you give the question and answer close that kind of thing? The question is, what's the timeline? What do we estimate the timeline for closing, right? And we said six to eight months. Is that beginning at notice or from this meeting or next decision when it's six to eight months? Once, once, once it's submitted. Once, it, once it's submitted. Once so it's submitted from the state out, six to eight months. So that was what they was that? We haven't, we haven't submitted it yet. Yeah, that's why we're here today. So, so is this part of the process? This will be part of the six to eight months, yes. Okay. The clock's running. The clock's running, yes. I got it. Okay.